Hello, everybody. So we're going to talk about lead tracking and attribution today. Uh, I hope this is, gonna, this is not going to be a boring uh, talk. Uh, I'll try my best not to make it. Uh, so let's move on. All right, let's start with a survey, right? So who doesn't like surveys? <laughs> so, can you, uh, maybe, like after, after my talk, maybe, there could be some cookies. Uh, so, just like, you know, raise your hands. Uh, how many people here believe they have a proper tracking system in their website right now? They do, like, proper tracking, lead tracking. I'm not <laughs> No one? Maybe, like, you know, maybe... The word proper scares me. So like I think I'm question. doing okay. Yeah. I'll find out whether it's proper. Okay. What is the so what I mean, what I mean by tracking is, uh, at a given time, can you like if someone signs up for your service, like let's say you have a form in your website, if someone signs up, can you tell where they are coming from? Google, Bing, etc. Yeah. Like just yes. raise your hands. Okay, that's perfect. Awesome. All right, so how many people use Google Analytics for in their website? Perfect. Do you need a four? Say it again? I'm sorry, I'm talking. Is it GA4 or universal? Yeah, both. Like, yeah. I mean, you, uh, there's no more UA after July, so everybody will be migrated to GA anyway, GA4. How many people use other third party plugins or services for lead tracking? other than Google Analytics. OK, perfect. OK, so now this is a tricky question. How many people utilize all the data collected within their website? It could be through third-party tracking. It could be Google Analytics to make a data-driven decision in their marketing. OK, there's less hands. That's expected. All right, so my name is Haktan Suren. Uh, I'm also called Dr. UTM. Uh, so first of all, I'm a father of two. I have two kids, two daughters, six and seven years old. Uh, actually, they are, in fact, my youngest employees in my company. They actually can contrib contribute a lot. They do sketches in Procreate, Adobe Photoshop, etc. cetera. Uh, the only form of payment I do is through cookies, candies, uh, food, sometimes entertainment, if they really perform well. Uh, but, you know, uh, recently they started reading about finance, uh, you know, making money, et cetera. I mean, I hooked them up uh, with the Finance 101 uh, for dummies. So that now they are learning, they are asking, they are demanding money for their service. That's kind of getting tricky. Uh, so I'm still working on that, like how can we work around the logistic and do a legal contract with them. <laughs> so I'm a marketing software developer. Uh, I have been developing uh, WordPress plugins uh, for the last 10 years. I have several free plugins uh, in the community, like you can freely use them. Uh, also, I have three commercial SaaS uh, software as a service. Uh, if this is not uh, convincing enough or sufficient enough, I, I also have a PhD in data science. Actually, Dr. UTM, I didn't come up with that. I have a Slack channel. Uh, there's around like 1,000 people there. Uh, we talk about lead tracking. People ask questions. I try to answer uh, all the lead tracking attribution type of questions. Uh, people who made the connection between, like, you know, I have PhD and, uh, you know, doing UTM tracking for 10 years, they made the connection. They started calling me Dr. UTM. I liked it. I kind of branded it and, you know, created LLC around it. So this is, this is how it came about. All right, so what is lead tracking? So the lead tracking is seamlessly monitoring and recording the progress of a potential leads through your sales funnel, right? So uh, it, it's like, you know, as if you have a crystal ball that tells you everything about feature, almost. All right, so people sign up, but, you know, you collect all the data about the leads, uh, and then through the data, you can tell where they come from, uh, what are they, they, are they interested in, and stuff like that. So keyword here is seamlessly, right? So it's got to be seamless. 
So maybe if you are like me, you noticed as well, some of the website, you've seen this, how did you find us section, right? So you're registering, uh, you know, you're maybe like opting for a, you're signing up for a website, and the last question is, how did you find us? So to me, this is not lead tracking because this is too obvious. Why this is not a lead tracking? Because people uh, can give you like misleading answer, right? So they're, you know, it's up to people. And most of the time, believe me, they don't, they don't know how they find your website. Go ahead. Your battery. Ah. Your right. <laughs> Sorry, my battery is running out, so I need to hook up my. All right. Just a little inconvenience. Thank you. So first of all, people can give you, uh, in my experience at least, uh, people don't know how they find your website, and they think like whenever the, whenever the last touch, like for example, they may see one of your ads, Facebook ads, but later on they may come organically. And here like they may mark, okay, organically I found your website, Google. But that's not the reality, right? So first they interacted with one of your Facebook ads. Uh, the second, second thing is uh, they may give you a random answer. That's what I do, actually. Uh, you know, whenever I see one of these, and especially if this is required, I just pick something, you know, one of them randomly, uh, or maybe like very first option. All right, so how can you track? So there are things like UTM parameters. Uh, and probably you have seen these before. Uh, it's UTM campaign, UTM source, medium, content, and term. Now I think there's a new edition, UTM ID. Uh, all the UTM builders, uh, they are appending UTM ID as well. You can use that. So there is, there is no generic convention how you can use these, but people, most of the people for the UTM campaign, they just assign campaign name. Whatever the campaign name they are running, they just ass assign it there. For UTM source, they usually assign the platform. right? So let's say, if the traffic is coming from Google, they put Google there, Bing, Bing, et cetera. So these are the attributes the marketing department or marketing people, they set it up by hand. These are not automatic. So some people assume, oh, the, this will be magically appended uh, in my marketing campaign, but this is not true. You have to do it uh, as a business owner or uh, marketing professionals. So for example, before I came here, uh, I just Googled hosting firm in Google, and here you can see the, you know, I click one of the Google ads. Uh, by, the, by the way, I'm not, uh, I'm not paid by Bluehost. This is not a paid advertising. It's just like randomly I click the first uh, result. Uh, UTM campaign and all the UTMs you can see in the URL. Why? Because most likely Bluehost is tracking uh, their marketing effort. All right, so did you know 90% of the sites not, properly, not doing proper lead tracking or lead attribution? And probably the, uh, more dramatically is 80% of the same people, they do think they are tracking. And this is based on my experience for the last 10 years. Whenever I talk with a client, they always say, no, we do tracking. Don't worry about it. Just make sure like we are sending the data back to our CRM. We, we solved all the tracking problem, but that's not true. I'm going to show you what are the challenges uh, when it comes to tracking, but this is my observation. All right, so before we get there, uh, this is one of the recent case studies we did for a client. Uh, just to attract you more, why lead tracking is important. So the, uh, the company name, the client is Pompa Program. We implemented proper tracking for them, lead tracking for them. Uh, we just kept it four months there. Uh, they were running ads before as well, before the tracking and uh, you know, after Dr. UTM as well. So we were able to decrease their CPA from 280, CPA by the way, cost, for, cost per action or cost per acquisition, how much money you are paying uh, to do something, uh, you know, the client, bringing the client to your website uh, to sign up, for example, so to sign up for some service. So we, 
we dropped their CPA from $283 to 125, which is 60% decrease. Uh, and you know why this is important? If you convert this into a revenue, we saved, we saved them $250,000 $50, per month in ad spend. So this is huge money, right? So I mean, obviously, they are spending $1 million per month. But this is, on top of that, this is very huge saving for them. Uh, what they can do with this money is, normally, a sensible businessman, uh, they just put this money back into their business to grow their business. That's, that's what they do. And that's what they did. And they have grown their company uh, exponentially for, you know, within one year. This is just because of the tracking, by the way. Like, there's no difference. They haven't changed anything in their campaign. They haven't changed anything in the ad copy, the message, the website, et cetera, nothing. It's just, you know, we just implemented proper tracking for them. All right, so what, why should you do lead tracking? So I have two categories here, the gather, analyze, and act. So first of all, you would like to know where your leads are coming from. As a business owner, you need to know. For every leads coming in and converting, filling up your forms in your website, you would like to know where they are coming from. That's the first thing. Because you would like to understand the customer behavior and preferences, right? So let's say uh, people coming from LinkedIn, they might be interested in specific service that you are offering versus people are coming from TikTok might be interested in totally different service. Right? So you would like to segment this data based on the source. Then you can uh, address that specific segment, put more content, etc. Analyze. Why analyze is, is important? David was giving a talk, uh, like uh, this SEO talk. Right? So uh, you would like to see how your campaigns are performing. Right? So uh, in most of the time, uh, you ran several campaigns, tens to hundreds, depending on the company. If, let's say you have like hundreds campaigns in Facebook ads, you would like to know which campaigns are uh, performing well or which campaigns are underperforming, right? So, so you can weed out. You can remove the ones that are not performing well so you can save money or put more money on the ones that are working well. So that's why you need to measure the success of your marketing. That's why you would like to do proper lead tracking. And act. Uh, so. In most of the cases, based on my observation or based on my clients' interactions, uh, usually business owners, they only have one traffic source, for like very significant traffic source for their business. It's, you know, sometimes it's like Facebook ads, right? So they are 90% of the traffic, converting traffic coming from Facebook ads, right? If you're not doing lead tracking, you may think, okay, this is my only source, right? So I'm going to focus... 100% on Facebook ads. But if you are doing proper lead tracking, maybe you can identify that remaining 10%. Let's say it's, it may be organic traffic. And uh, maybe you can think like, OK, my organic, I'm not putting a lot of investment. I'm not generating content. I'm not putting a lot of organic content. Maybe I can put more content out there and to increase my organic revenue as well. Right? So this is something really important because don't rely on one traffic source. It's always nice to have like multiple traffic source coming to your website because you never know uh, like when Facebook is going to shut down your ads account, right? So that, that happens. You know, it happened to me a couple times. Uh, they shut down my account, and you know, it's hard to find a contact in Facebook to you know get get that account back. Then you need to focus on other marketing channels, right? So life. This is this this happens. And also, like, leaving, leaving the dollar on the table, right? So let's say if you have potential in organic, uh, you don't want to leave that dollar, you know, money on the, on the table, right? So just, like, materialize it. Like, how can you make it, uh, how can you generate that revenue from organically? All right. So let's, let's talk about the common misconceptions about lead tracking. This is, like, I think this slide and the next slide after, after this, it's really important. Uh, the... These are, again, based on my experience for the last 10 years. Uh, so this question I always get, cookie-based tracking is becoming history, right? So this is as good as saying 
WordPress is going to be history because WordPress relies on cookies. Whenever you log into your WP admin, WordPress leaves cookies in your browser. So it knows you're logged in to, to, you know, to the back end. So you know, most of the tracking tools, uh, they work in the principle of uh, leaving cookies in clients' browser so they can track seamlessly because UTM's not always in the address bar. Uh, so cookies not going anywhere. The browsers are not changing their, you know, the way they work, right? So cookies are always going to be there, so don't worry about it. And you can still rely on cookie-based tracking. All right, so most of the marketers that I met, they think UTM parameters that I showed you in the Bluehost case, uh, they must be in the URL from start to the conversion, always. That's wrong as well. Uh, you don't, like, if you have a proper UTM tracking, you don't need to have this because you capture all the data at the first touch, right? So you're getting all the UTMs from the ads platform to start with. Whenever someone hits your website, just gather this data into cookies or somewhere, right? And whenever they convert, pull that data from cookies and send it to your CRM, etc. So UTMs doesn't have to be in the address bar all the time. Because most of the time, think about it, like if, when people come to your website, let's say they come to your website from Facebook ads, uh, they have, you know, it has UTMs, but no one, no one converts on the first page, right? So, I mean, it's too ideal. It would be really nice uh, if people convert on the first visit, but this is not reality, right? So usually people come to your website and then they search you in Google, who is Dr. UTM, right? So can I trust this guy? Okay, no, I'm not going to purchase it then. Or maybe, yes, I, I found more information about it. I read some articles, YouTube videos, etc., and they come back to your website. But guess what? There's no UTMs anymore, right? So because like they just plain, they know your uh, website address, they come to your website directly, right? So then you lost all the UTMs. Uh, but if you do proper tracking, normally you tag that person by, it could be by IP, it could be by, uh, user agent, et cetera, there are some specific ways of tracking people. Uh, then, you know, if, uh, you can gather all the information that you originally collected, like all the UTMs. All right, so the, some of the marketers that I met, uh, they don't even know tracking, what the tracking template is. In advertising platform, in every advertising platform, Facebook has it, Google, Bing, you have tracking template there. Uh, it's meant for marketers to put some data. Normally, uh, when people click uh, your ads uh, from Facebook, uh, the Facebook sends some data to your website about the leads. Uh, so you can program this in the advertising platform to send like campaign name, even ad set name, creation, uh, ad creative name, uh, stuff like that. You can send a lot of data back to your website. Uh, not a lot of marketers utilize this. Is that the, uh, the targeting values when it comes to ads or no? Uh, say it again, targeting? Targeting values, you know, like those parameters that you can use to actually... Uh, is that, no. Is that what you mean? No, the targeting values is different. It, it's at the conversion. Okay. You send this, the conversion data back to Facebook. Okay. But these are, like when you set your campaign, right? So you're setting your campaign, uh, you're creating your landing page URL, uh, you know, you have, let's say you have 10 campaigns, mm -hmm. you, you, name, you name them differently, campaign one, two, three, four, five. So each landing page, you want to assign UTM underscore campaign, campaign one, campaign two, campaign three. So you know, which, you, you know uh, what ads people have seen and clicked. That's, that's what I meant. So tracking template, use it, put any data that you are interested in, in addition to UTMs, you can send some demographic data as well. Like Facebook and Google can do that. Uh, they can send the device type, like iPhone, iPad, uh, whatever the device uh, the clients are using. Uh, they can send, like for example, if you are doing like search ads, Google Ads search, uh, you can program to send keyword, that specific keyword that users searched to find, to, to find your website. So that's also crucial. 
There are so many things in Google. This is called value track. So if you search value track in Google, you can find all these information, what else you can send uh, to your landing page. And after you send it, you can collect all of this data. Because I mean, technically, you own this data because you're paying it, right? So you're paying it in Google Ads and Facebook Ads. Just like retrieve all the data you can get from these platforms firsthand. All right, so this tracking template is important. Otherwise, what, what advertising platform uh, do is, you know, any advertising platforms, they send click ID by default, right? So probably you have seen those. FB click ID, Jiglet, it's called Jiglet or Google click ID. Or Bing also has its own version, MS click ID. Uh, these are only uh, useful for the advertising platform to track. It's not useful for you because these are encrypted hash key. It's very long hash keys. It's impossible to encode them back to, or decode them back to what it means. But advertising platforms know those, they can track, so they can track, track people, right? So, but it's, it doesn't mean anything to you. So that's why like, you need to use tracking template and put some meaningful information there to track. All right, so most of the people think uh, Google Analytics is sufficient. Uh, I like Google Analytics, so don't get me wrong. I use it as well, but it only provides very high level information, right? So uh, it's, it's, I mean, first of all, in order to, first of all, you can get lost in Google Analytics, right? So it's very easy to do that. There's so many data, so much data in Google Analytics, and it's hard to find actionable items in Google Analytics for your business, right? So, I mean, there is, uh, you can segment the data, uh, you know, left and right, but, you know, it's, it's hard to make sense out of it. And also, uh, I think David is mentioning again in the morning, uh, you need to create specific events, right? So for each touch points, like for example, sign up, uh, the initiate checkout or complete checkout. So you need to create different events and set it up properly. Right? If you're not setting up properly, even Google Analytics is not going to help you either. So either way, you have to set it up properly. Keyword tracking from organic search. This is something I get a lot as well. Can I track a uh, keyword from organic search? The answer is no. Uh, it's not possible. Maybe this was possible like five years ago, eight years ago, but Google uh, is no more allowing this. Uh, so you cannot track keywords. There are people, uh, you know, out of United States, they told me, well, uh, the, I don't know, like the Google in Brazil, they allow. I don't know. I have no idea if they allow, but uh, Google in the United States, they don't, they don't allow. So you cannot retrieve keywords from organic search. But what can you do is there is a Google search console. Uh, you can create an account and see a very high level picture. Right, so what people are searching to find your website. But you cannot associate keyword with a lead. That's what we are talking about here, right? So lead tracking and attribution. You cannot attribute keyword with a lead. All right. So when it comes to implementation, what are the challenges in tracking? Right, so unfortunately, it's not like one size fit all. Like there's no one size fit all solution out there. Uh, Google Analytics makes it, I mean, sounds, sounds like you know, it's very easy to do it. Like just grab a JavaScript snippet and put it in the header or body and everything will magically work, right? So uh, I mean, I don't want to disappoint you, but you know, uh, things are harder than that uh, in most of the cases. Uh, you need, to, like, there are some other challenges. So let's talk about them. So first of all, uh, the missing data, right? So whatever you integrate, it could be Google Analytics, it could be a third-party lead tracking solution. Uh, you may see some missing data, even in Google Analytics, right? So you go there, there's like Google attribution, there's some Facebook attribution, but there's also NA, right? So there's no attribution there. Right, so uh, sometimes I've seen accounts like 80% of the traffic NA. I have no idea where they come from. Only 20%, I know like, okay, it's coming from Google, but 80%, I have no idea. I've seen like Google Analytics accounts like this. So why is that? The first reason it, 
first reason, the most common reason is you're not setting the tracking template that I mentioned uh, previously, right? So go to your advertising, if you're advertising uh, Facebook and, or in Google, go, to your, uh, go back to your advertising account and check if you have a tracking template set up. You might be working with an agency or you might be agency yourself. Uh, you know, just make sure you set up a blanket, maybe like account level tracking template. You can set it up at the campaign level as well, but just create one just to be safe, account level. It applies all the campaigns automatically. So every single people click your ads, they will have like UTM campaign at least associated. And then this data will appear in Google Analytics or any third party tracking uh, that you use. Okay, the most common problem uh, about missing data is uh, the encoding problems. Especially if you are using, uh, let's say, space in the campaign name, UTM campaign, UTM underscore campaign, or uh, let's say you are using uh, non-English letters or non-Latin letters uh, in the campaign name. Usually this applies to uh, countries like you know, Latin America countries or some European countries as well. They use like some special characters in the campaign name. Then what they get, what they get back is like encoded string. It doesn't look like the original campaign name anymore, right? So then it screws up all the downstream analysis. You, you can no longer match. Okay, this is the data I collected, but I don't have, I don't even have matching campaign, right? So it's hard to just match your whatever you collect with the data that you have in your Google Ads. Or sometimes UTMs magically being striped off, right? So why? There are some plugins, uh, I've seen it, they, it removes all the UTMs, all the query arguments, and it does redirect, 301 redirects to your homepage. Or not homepage, but the naked URL that you have. Uh, so it just stripes off before it hits your website, so you don't get that data anymore. Right, so even Google Analytics cannot see that data anymore. So make sure there is no weird redirection uh, or you know, there are plugins doing this. Or it could be server, server side uh, doing this as well. Right? So there are some servers, it's just striping off all the UTMs before it hits your website and it just redirects to the naked uh, domain. So these are the most common reasons why you're getting missing data. So let's talk about the second reason. Uh, the cached uh, websites, right? So nowadays, the websites uh, rely on caching a lot, right? So if you're working with WP Engine, uh, there is like Patheon, there are some hosting firms, they do very aggressive caching. SiteGround is one of them. They do very aggressive caching. Uh, so whenever this happens, uh, what happens is these hosting firms they sometimes they remove the, all the query arguments and they cache the naked domain's content, right? So, and then they serve it to like thousands of people. That's how it speeds up your website, which is great. I mean, I'm not against caching. Uh, every hosting firm should have caching system because it optimizes your website speed. But uh, while doing that, it's hurting the tracking as well, right? So you gotta be careful. Because like I said, if they are removing the UTMs, that means you're, not gonna, you're, no, you're no longer uh, capture those, that data, right? That's first thing. Or the other thing is, uh, I've seen this as well, uh, one leads comes to your website, server cache the content for that user. And then after that 100 users comes after that user, it will be tagged same UTM repeatedly. So you will end up seeing duplicated UTM source, campaign, uh, click ID, even click ID, same. Do you have a question? Uh, no, I have a comment with that. Uh, actually, I worked at a place that worked with leads, and we were having that problem because, yeah, it was uh, doing a page cache of, of, of the home page, right. and it was grabbing either something naked or something with UTM tracking that belonged to another guy. Exactly. Uh, we solved the problem by installing a plugin that didn't cache if it had uh, query parameters in the URL. Right. Uh, WP Rocket all, has that. Yeah, not all of them do that. Yes, okay. not, not all the plugins do that. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so that's the problem. Just be careful. If your server is leveraging caching, make sure no data is, you know, gets lost. 
because this happens uh, a lot of the time. All right, so the other uh, reason, the challenges that, uh, you know, very co common in tracking, uh, page to page, like passing the data of page to page. Uh, so this is really challenging as well because uh, you, get, you get a traffic from Facebook ads, right? So like I said previously, people don't stay and convert on the same page. If that's happening, that's great in your life. But it, based on my experience, I haven't seen anything like that. People usually come to your website, like I said, and they bounce back, uh, search about your business online in Google Bing, and they come back to your website again. Or what happens is uh, they click some internal links inside your website, right? So, and uh, a good tracking system should capture all this data in the cookies and pass through page to page. The other challenge I've, I've seen is uh, the marketing agency runs the ads to one landing page, but the conversion happens on subdomain, right? So let's say you have domain.com, you ran all the traffic there, but you redirect people to sign up to app.domain.com, right? So now all the U if, if all the UTMs are registered on domain.com, then you need to pass all this data to app.domain.com as well. So that's uh, also uh, some of the challenges. Okay, so let's assume you have collected all the data about the leads. You have a bunch of data now, right? So I'm hoping everybody gets a lot of leads. So I'm assuming you collect a lot of data as well, like thousands and uh, like million data records, data points. So now what? What can you do with this data? Right, so that's, this is the most crucial slide probably. So first of all, you can simply synchronize this data back to your CRM. That's the best thing to do, right? Just keep that, you, you have the ownership of the data, keep it somewhere you can access. Because like I said, you paid for this data upfront, right? So why don't you save it in CRM so you can access it anytime you want? The second best thing you can, actually this is the best thing uh, to do if you are running paid ads, right? Send this data back to advertising platform, right? So if you, you are uh, leveraging any type of paid ads, whatever data you collect about your leads, send it back to advertising platform. It could be Facebook, Google, Bing, they all allow this. Google, I think it allows in a form of CSV file you download this data and upload it to Google. Uh, Facebook can automate this. Uh, I think there's something called Facebook Conversion API. If you're not using it, definitely leverage it uh, because that means like you can send this data back to Facebook and what Facebook does with this data, it optimizes your ads based on this data. It finds you better clients, be better audience, and it will be, uh, you know, it will select better quality audience for you, so you will pay less uh, for gaining that client uh, for your service. And you can create uh, like audience and pixels uh, in, in Facebook as well, uh, or in Google as well, and you can use this audience to uh, run advertising, uh, like you know, retargeting ads or targeting ads for this audience specifically. Or simply you can export this data into an Excel, right? So if, you have, if you're getting only 10 clients, uh, 100 clients, you know, just don't, don't bother uh, doing all the crazy stuff. Just export it in Excel and just skim through, right? So, okay, where are people coming from? Where should I invest my next marketing effort? Or if you feel fancy, build a business intelligence, right? So you collect all the data in a sophisticated database Right, so in AWS, for example, you can leverage Athena service uh, to pull all the data. Or in Google, uh, you can use BigQuery ML, put all the data there, and then generate a nice visualization in Google Studio or Tableau. You know, there are some uh, other services as well. You can visualize it. So this is uh, something, some product that I worked on three months ago. I launched this product. Uh, we are, uh, we are creating business intelligence system in Data Studio for our clients, uh, leveraging BigQuery. And you, know, you can visualize it 
just like the pictures on the right-hand side. All right. So how can you get started, right? There are two options. You can hire me, and I can get it done for you. It could be expensive. I'm, I'm just like giving a heads up. Or the second option, uh, my favorite option, and I'm killing my business here as well, go to wordpress.com slash plugins and search for UTM and download the very first plugin you have seen. And probably it should say UTM Grabber. That's the plugin that I developed 10 years ago. It's still valid. It's kind of amazing, right? Uh, so uh, I haven't put a lot of features on it, but you know, I still maintain it. Uh, we have 10,000 active installations, and we have like 120 five-star reviews. So people actually use this. If you're not doing any type of lead tracking, or if you are missing any data points, just get started using UTM Grabber, and then your tracking experience will completely change. All right? You can scan the QR code to get the data as well. Do we have some more time? Or, or maybe, or maybe let's let's <laughs> say it again. <laughs> All right. So, do we have? Do you guys have any questions? <laughs> okay. let, let me let me get you the mic. I don't know if it's working. Test. Nope. Test. Yeah. Uh, the plugin for UTM Grabber, it clearly will capture all those leads and throw them down with cookies. Uh, does it also automate pushing the convert of uh, those leads back to the ad platforms? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, although it does a lot of the things that I mentioned in my slides, uh, pushing back to data is not one of them. The free version is not doing it. I, we have a premium version that does that. Yeah. So thanks for this. Um, I had a question uh, about uh, just where do you see websites in the future around just the dynamism or dynamic intelligent websites, which is based on tracking data? Um, if you can talk a little about that, what, what I mean is, you know, I'm tracking you, and when you come to my website, for example, next week, you see a very different page that is designed specifically for you, because mm -hmm. I'm tracking you. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm told that, like, for Amazon, you know, like, no one, no two users sees the same homepage and stuff. I'm just wondering what your thoughts are about kind of that coming to being for, especially for like WordPress sites and all? Yeah, that's a great question. It's very complicated to build such system. Uh, I do a lot of custom uh, integration like this. You know, kind of like A-B test almost, right? So, I mean, you're talking about much more complex than A-B test because uh, you're talking about user experience altogether, right? So I'm serving a specific content to John Right? So, and so if someone else is coming to my website, the, uh, the complete experience would be different for them. Right? So that's really hard to build because you need a lot of database power. Right? So you need to collect it, this data. Not only collect it, you need to save it and retrieve that data back really fast. Right? So it's hard to build. I have built it before for a client. Uh, but I, I can say it's really hard to build. I don't know like, if this can be uh, something uh, made available to every business owners. I think this will still be like very specific uh, type of like niche type of thing. It's still custom. I don't see like even within five years, this would be a like core WordPress. Okay, you know, uh, this will be a thing because it requires a lot of backend power. And it's expensive, right? So maintaining database behind the scene for all that user. I mean, not every, not every business has like 100 clients. There are people like, you know, coming to their website, like million visitors. What are you going to do with that data, right? So you need to store and 
retrieve that pretty fast. So that's not going to happen in the near future. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe quantum computers? I don't know. <laughs> we now have these cookies policies and all that, that all developers and companies have to worry about it. Um, how the UTM grabber handle that situation of when the, the customer, final customer, the person that accessed the website denied the cookies or, you know, they don't accept that. It, it, it's right. anything that the plugin, because now everybody has to have the policy. You guys already managed to add that to the policy. How that, that situation around the, the cookie policy, it's handled by your plugin. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, usually the cookie policies like apply only Californian residents and the European, right? So GDPR and CCPA, I think. Marco was giving a talk yesterday about this like consent uh, management, right? So the free plugin uh, collects data regardless, the free version of the plugin. It's not going to ask consent. It doesn't work with the consent, I believe. Uh, I need to double check that. It's been a while since I developed this plugin. Uh, but I think we have a premium version that works with the consent management plugins that Marco mentioned yesterday, right? So cookie notice, uh, the compliance. Uh, there is another one. There, there's actually uh, several. Uh, so we, we support them. So which means if you are using one of those plugins, then uh, our, you can prevent our plugin to capture any data about the leads until the consent is given. So you can do that with the premium version. Or with the premium version, we have our own consent management. Uh, so you can enable it, and then it will ask questions to people, people uh, whether they are consenting to give the data. It's worth mentioning that at the point when the data is arriving into the website, that's data that they presumably already consented to hand over from the other website, from the ad, and you've already received it before any <coughs> Uh, before any of the uh, consent has been given. So as long as you capture a first thing, it doesn't really matter what they click. <clears throat> yeah, but if they, don't, if they don't consent it, you need to remove it, right? So that's, that's what GDPR says. Good point. Yeah. yeah, right. You can't use that data anymore. You need to delete it. That, at least like that's, that's how far I know about GDPR rules. If a European country resident says, I don't want you to track me, or even like, you, you, they might be a client of yours, and they may still ask you to remove all the sensitive data, and you need to abide by, by law, as far as I know. I'm not a lawyer, so don't take my word for it, but uh, I think that's, yeah. Yo, Marco, Marco approved it, that's good. There's the, the premium version of Let me get you the mic, sorry. Does the premium version of your plugin remove the data for someone who uses right. not to consent? Is that yes. It? Yes. Okay. It's, it's completely GDPR and uh, yeah, GDPR compliant. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. Any more questions? I can actually give a quick demo if you guys are interested in uh, with the free, free version, uh, how it works. Uh, it will be really quick. Just to demonstrate like, how, how things work uh, in the other side. So I just built this. Uh, this is my demo site, actually. It's my local instance. So I have contact form 7. Uh, this is one of the contact form that you can use. Like, uh, this could be one of your lead form. Right, so you collect name and email information. Uh, so what you do is it's very easy. So assuming you have the plugin already installed, uh, you can do this as well. We can demonstrate. You go to plugins, and then here add new, and search for UTM. There's no, I mean, there are some other UTM plugins as well, but uh, this plugin is really dominating in the space. <laughs> right now in terms of free plugin. So just download it, activate it, and you'll be ready to go. Uh, so ready to go means 
it will capture the data, right? So let me demonstrate it. So usually people come to your website like this, UTM underscore campaign, and let's put campaign one as an example. So as soon as someone hits your website like this, I have my browser, the developer screen open. Uh, this is a little bit advanced, but in the application, I, Marco was showing this yesterday as well. Uh, so if you search for cookies, uh, UTM campaign, you'll see UTM campaign here cam as campaign one, right? So it's immediately captured that data. So it's, it's ready to be read or you know, in the downstream to be used. So let me demonstrate this as well. But if, even if I remove this UTM data from my query argument, still I'm, I'm being tagged, right? So the UTM data is still in the cookies, right? So there's no more UTM in the address bar. This is one of the best feature of the plugin. So even if I navigate through my website, right? So I'm no longer uh, on the same page where I landed, right? So I'm just clicking around uh, casually, but still I'm being tagged with the UTM campaign, right? So the browser knows I am this person uh, who came from campaign one. Is that, is that based because you, the first time you went to it? Yes. They had, they had the UTM and the URL and the next time it comes back around, you don't have to have it in you no more? Yes, exactly. So first time you come to website, all the data is captured in the cookies about you. So now I can identify you because I know your user agent. Browser does that, basically. That's how cookies work. Okay. So I put the data in your cookies, and I track you throughout your journey now. Okay. So I don't have to have any UTMs in the address bar anymore. So, so when I set up my ad campaigns, I do for the first time, when I do that link that takes you to, I have to put the UTM right. as part of the URL. But when they come back later, they don't get the Yes, exactly. They will be still tracked unless they switch device, right? So that's another issue. Uh, I can give another talk about that, uh, but that's a different issue. You have a question? Yes. <laughs> so does the plugin capture just anything with the frame? Hello? Yes. Thank you. Uh, does the plugin capture anything with the phrase UTM or campaign, or does it settings specify what things you Sure. The free version, I believe, it captures all the things that uh, starts with a generic UTMs, UTM campaign source, medium, term, content, uh, and Jiglet. But it's limited to that. Okay. The premium version can capture anything, all the query arguments that you can define. You, you can define it yourself as well. Good question. So now, let's say, you know, we are tagged, right? So I actually, like before I come here, uh, what I did is this is my contact form seven uh, post. This, you know, I just embedded my contact form. And I'm just gonna show you how it looks like. For those who, who is, you know, who's familiar with the contact form, uh, you can build your fields, right? So basically I have name and email field, but I throw a bunch of things here. Right, so we have a documentation, don't worry about it, you can find these. Uh, so uh, basically what I do here is, I'm creating a hidden fields in my form. Right, so this is not available to user, but it's in the DOM, it's in the HTML. Right, so uh, it's available. And uh, the plugin, UTM Grabber, finds, like detects those fields and autofill them. That's how it works. So now let's demonstrate it. And I hook this up to an email, so we'll receive an email after I sign up, and you'll see the content. Uh, by the way, yeah, let me, let me show you the mail content as well. The mail that I will receive, it will have like from, name, email, and all the UTM source uh, embedded in the email. This is one way to capture data, but there, there are like tons of different flavors. You can sync this data back to CRM as well. It's up to you, but this is the most basic form. Uh, what you can do, like how, how you can track and do lead, lead attribution. All right, so CF7, we go there, let's put some real information. That's real information. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so since my, this is my local instance, uh, I receive email in my local as well. 
So I have a program for this. But normally, on a production setup, you receive an email, actual email. All right, so this is the type of email you get when someone signs up for, uh, for your service. Right? So you have a name, email, etc. Everything you see here is automatically filled up by the plugin. It's auto-filled, right? so based on the data. By the way, why do we see CP, CPC issues, etc.? Right? So you may ask this question. I mean, most likely, I have been tagged previously with these UTMs because I was testing at the hotel yesterday. <laughs> I was playing with all the different UTMs. So probably all these UTMs are in, the, in my cookies already. So yeah, if you check here, all these UTM parameters, everything I was tagged before, now it's being captured in the email. Yes? So you mentioned it's good for 30 days. Right. What app, is that a can 30, so if today's the first and you enter this, is it 30 days I don't do anything and then it expires? Or if I came back on the 15th, does it start another 30 days at that point? Yeah, the second one. If, if you come like on day 15, it will expand and it will give you another 30 days cookie time. Yes. And FYI, in the free version, it's limited to 30 days like this. Uh, but I think in premium, uh, we made it kind of unlimited. You can just set your cookie time as you wish. All right, I think this is a two-part question. Um, what is the value add of having that information in your email if, it's already, if you're already getting it when somebody clicks on the link? And then the other part of it, is that some of the data, is that stuff you browse on somebody else's site and it kept the YouTube data? Is it always associated with what you were doing on your site? Yeah, this is always associated with my site. Okay. That's why it's called first-party tracking. So if you, if, if you guys know, like, you know, with iOS 14, there's no more third-party tracking. Facebook used to do that, right? So they used to track all the sites, uh, the, you know, their pixels installed, but no more, right? So this is first-party first, first uh, cookie, only related to your website. So your first question is, if you are driving traffic from UTM campaign, already you have UTMs in the address bar, what is the use case of capturing uh, this data? Uh, but you know how else you can capture though, right? Because it's only in the query argument, right? So if someone converted, you need to, you would like to associate this data with the lead, right? So you're saying the data that's coming in, I have to cross map it back with the people who visit previously? No, actually, it's already mapped here, right? So this is my name, this is my email that I used to sign up for your oh, service. And it's pulling all the data that's associated with the exactly. Data. So exactly. It exactly. It's in the email already. This is, like I said, this is the most basic form how you can collect the data. But normally, what people do is they automate this, right? So normally, you sync this data to your CRM directly. Mm -hmm. It could be HubSpot, it could be Infusionsoft, right? So whatever the CRM system you are using, you sync all this system to them. Uh, by doing that, while doing that, you can also sync all the UTMs because you already collected. That's what I was trying to say. But this is the most basic form. Uh, people do this just to receive email about their leads. Uh, I do that as well. You know, it makes me happy when someone signs up for my service. I just see, okay, this, this person came from this, this place, right? So just, but also I collect in my CRM as well. I automated that too. Premium version. And the premium version allows us to get pushed back to the first part, correct? Uh, well, it depends on what kind of CRM you use. We have a Zapier integration. Uh, even the free version has Zapier integration. You can push your data to Zap, and from Zap, you can technically put it anywhere you want. Okay. Even free version does that. Yep. Thanks. So for the slow people like me, well, I'm not going to assume anybody else is slow like me. I always assume that UTMs were for tracking, just like shown here. And going into Google Analytics, I can say, oh, this campaign drove this much traffic and this stuff. Using this way now, I can identify that specific individual who signed up with the UTMs and the campaigns. Yes. So that got me thinking. So if somebody clicks on an ad or something, comes through this, I can tag them as that, that's the source. If they don't do anything, and then they click on another campaign later on with different parameters, perhaps, 
this might be a little bit out of the scope of what you're doing here. I now have data that says they were here first, they were here the second time, this one converted. As far as a best practice, do you keep both? Do you just look at the most recent as the first one? Or yeah, that's a great any question. Training about like, the best uses of implementing your tool. Yeah. Paul, that's a great question, by the way. That's not for slow people. That's very, for very advanced, very advanced people, whatever you are asking. That's, that's called first touch and last touch attribution, right? So Google Analytics use based on last touch. Actually, most of the, uh, even the advertising platform, they use last touch approach, which means, I'll demonstrate it for you. So for example, now I'm tagged for UTM campaign, campaign one here, right? If I come to this website again with another campaign, let's call it another campaign, like this, I'll be tagged with another campaign all of a sudden. OK, so as you can see here, the plugin works based on last touch uh, principle. Uh, the free version, at least, works based on the last touch principle, but the premium version can capture the first, both first and last touch simultaneously. Yeah. We can talk a little bit more. All right, I think time is out for me today. Thank you so much for listening.